my name is Kim Poe. I am Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library, and we are here with Kate and Chris from the Stratford Public Library, yet another library that I used to work at kind of sort of maybe six times a year. Um, and they are going to tell us today about a awesome collaborative partnership situation between the library, the senior center, and iPads, which sounds really awesome. So they are going to take it away with this issue of Connecticut Pages, where we will learn a way to take a page from the Stratford Library's book. Hey, hi. So um, I'm Kate. I'm the head of IT at uh, Stratford Library. And um, our building is right next door to the Town Senior Center. Um, we share a parking lot with them. We've done a lot of programs with them before. Um, usually um, we've done, you know, we've done demos with them. We've done lots of different types of programs with them. Um, and they're really lovely partners. Um, they got a grant from a group called the Digital Dreams Project. Uh, they, and, and what that group does is it gives refurbished technology to kids and seniors who need it. Um, and you, they collect um, donated uh, donated technology, they refurb it, and then they give it out to folks who need it. And they, they had a grant to give iPads to, um, to their clientele for, to increase access for things like telemedicine. Um, it was all sort of pandemic related. Um, and they were working with some of our coworkers to set up the classes. Um, they've, they do a ton of programming over there, but they don't do a lot of extensive tech training. And we, of course, as libraries, do a lot of extensive tech training. Um, and we know that that can be tricky in large groups. You know, the trend I think in libraries broadly has been towards one-on-ones or very, very small groups, things that are very specific. You know, you wanna have a group of people who are all kind of in the same place with the same technology. Um, and so you want to have everybody have similar kind of questions even. Um, so the day of the class, um, our coworker who had been sort of managing even being the point person and was going to teach, it was out sick. Um, and so she couldn't come in and, you know, especially with all of our enhanced worries about that. Mm. Um, so, so we, I called over there because um, it was like, oh no, what are we going to do? And I said, hey, you know, what's, what's going on with this? And, and what we had known at that point was that they had these iPads um, and that the, the iPads they had initially had actually been um, too old to even use the app store. Like they were just, they couldn't get updated to the latest iOS. So the plan was great. Like that's something you can do with a pretty big group is just show people how to do browsing the web, you know, cause that's all you could really do with them. And that would be fine for telemedicine. It would fit the bill, like no problem. And when I called over and said, you know, okay, we're gonna, a little bit of a change. I'm gonna be the person doing it, um, you know, what's the status of the iPads? Can I just snag one to look at ahead of time? And they said, oh, we got new ones. So you can show them how to use the app store. And, you know, that's a whole different thing. Now we've got to create accounts. That's a whole different, you know, um, it's a little, um, so we, um, we went over there, you know, I, I grabbed an iPad. We made sure we knew. So we knew right away, it was gonna be a two-part class. We knew right away the first class was gonna be setting up accounts. Um, Cause that's always a really, big process for folks and especially um, for, for folks who don't already have an account and we didn't know if the people in the class were going to have email addresses, even things like that. Um, we had one other person who was already signed, who was already going to come over with us. And then Chris, um, Chris was, was vol volunteered, <laughs> um, um, no, Chris uh, volunteered to also um, be what, what I always think of as you've got the person who's doing all the talking and then you have people doing the, the collie dog aspect of it where you're running around the perimeter of the room, making sure everybody's moving in the same direction. Um, I grew up with collies and that's how I always, I always, I had this mental image of it. <laughs> um, so, um, so we had a pretty big class um, and it was a little bit of a bumpy start for us because there was some, you know, all this last minute but it, we thought this is manageable, it's okay. Um, and the people at the senior center are terrific and they really know their population. They do a ton of social services work. Um, and during the pandemic, the building had been totally closed for renovations. Um, and also because it was such an at-risk population, you know, as things started, they really, they closed down. Um, they actually only just started to open up um, relatively recently. So even when we started these classes, we did this the first one in August, um, they were still closed to the public and we just, they just had this one room open to do this in. Um, they wear a ton of hats over there. And one of the things that we ended up talking with them a lot about was just, you know, as we were setting up and breaking down and chatting with them as, as we were doing this, 
um, you know, for their service population, this whole period of time has caused a huge impact, you know, increased isolation, loss of skills, also, you know, you know physical problems just from not being able to go places. Um, and so adding all of that into a lot of technology anxiety um, made for a really, the first, the first class we found, so we did this three different months. Um, the first class was always um, a little more intense because, you know, they were kind of coming in going, we don't really know what's happening. You know, the, the class attendees were coming in feeling uncertain often. Um, so, so the first day we said, okay, we're just going to do setting up an Apple ID. Next class was more of a Q&A and downloading apps. Um, you know, some of the people coming in already had Apple ID. So they walked in, they had an iPhone, but then of course passwords, um, always the issue. Um, we had handouts for them. We had a card, Chris made a card. Do you have one of the cards? I do. It's Ooh, super okay. simple. Super yeah, simple. Yeah. Um, basically, um, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it's, it just has a space that says my Apple ID is, my passcode is, and then I also included kind of our names and contact info. That way, you know, the people who attended our classes would able would be able to remember us and reach out and and you know not feel shy about that and also feel confident knowing they they remember us they know who we are and that we can be their their familiar faces at the library yeah and that was for us it was really about um you know making sure that that this program that the senior center had done also had our you know they had a, they had a resource with us and we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training people can call and make appointments um and you know as i said that that has been the trend and we've really found that to be really useful um because you know most of these gadgets and t most technology at this point is set up with on the assumption that you are one person using it and everybody's use is really different. Um, so if you have people who want to say do Facebook, but other people who want to only do Zoom or whatever, like that's, that's two different groups of people. They have very different needs with their technology. Um, so the, the first class was it, every month we did this. The first class was always very intense um, because it, you know everybody was in a different place. You know we would always you know we have to start with like does everybody have an email address? And if people don't, like they we got to do that separately. Like you got to we've got to set that up. Um, and so each you know I felt like each month as we did this we kind of got better at it. We always we started bringing our own computers so that we could pull the people who didn't have email. You know one person would take them and set them up with email. Um, you know we. And the second class we found was always a little bit smoother and we were a little bit concerned every month we were like what if this is the facebook group um because every month we thought there's gonna there's gonna be people who want to use facebook and that opens this whole other set of issues and concerns um but what we really found was that they wanted zoom um a lot of conversation about zoom versus facetime and they wanted to know how to take and send pictures it was all communication based which given the events of the past two years no surprise. Um, so it was all about staying connected with their relatives and their family and their friends. And, and um, that was really what we, what we focused on um, in mostly in the second class. Um, and we found that um, going forward, they came back for one-on-ones. They, a lot of them did, they were all thrilled for the most part. Um, I think the senior center is hopefully planning on doing this again. Um, they do the recycling drive where people bring in their old uh, devices to do for donation, and then they donate them to this organization and the organization in kind gives them these refurb iPads. So I, they, I think they're gonna be doing this again next year, we hope. And so now we, we feel like we got our sea legs this year, we're ready. Um, I think next year um, we're hoping to try and make the process for signing people up for their Apple IDs a little bit smoother and maybe do that separate from the class because doing that in a group really was it was hard for people and I think because you know different people because that is area where everybody's in different places and because a lot of the people coming into the room um, were coming in with a lot of anxiety about technology a lot of fear around like my screen looks different, so I must be doing it wrong. And it's like, no, 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 it's fine. Like that person already had an email address or that person already had an Apple ID. Um, and interestingly, the people who already had Apple IDs were often the people who were, you know, they were sort of ahead, but then they often, because they weren't doing all the steps, they were like, surely I am doing this wrong. And I was like, no, you were fine. You were, you were actually okay. Um, but it was, um, it was, it, it's turned out to be a really fruitful partnership. Um, it's given, at least for me, I mean, I, you know, I knew a little bit what the senior center did, but it's given me a much deeper appreciation of all of their programming over there. Um, and the folks over there who are just 
so good at their jobs. I mean, they're people I would see, you know, in passing, um, but really seeing them do the work was was really impressive. And I think for us, it was a really nice way to promote our one-on-one -on -one programs and get people to come into the library with their devices. Um, and that's the part that Chris has been talking about because he handled almost uh, the vast majority of the, the people coming back in and saying, oh, <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so um, hi everybody, I'm Chris and I'm a technology specialist at Stratford Library. And um, I did handle the bulk of the one-on-ones, but I also had help from Kate and um, the reference department here at the library. And I think the one-on-ones are honestly the, the best thing to come out of the, the classes because no matter how good of a teacher you are, it is very difficult to teach an entire class um, because like Kate said, everyone is at different comfort levels, different skill levels, different, they have different wants out of the class, you know, who wants to learn the mechanics of their iPad versus who just wants to be able to take pictures. Um, and the one-on-ones really give us the opportunity to provide an individualized service, which is I think one of the unique facets of working in a library is that we're able to do that. And we're able to get to know our patrons and kind of pick up on what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with, what they might need help with, um, where we can step in and also how to approach it in a way that's gonna be best suited for them. Because, you know, you could find out someone wants Facebook help and you can give them all the instructions on Facebook, but maybe they need to be shown or walked through it or reassured that they're okay. And that's where the one-on-ones came into play. Um, and I was really excited that really a lot of people from our classes did come in for one-on-ones and I was able to spend 45 minutes, an hour. Um, one of the things that was unique about the one-on-ones is that there was no, you know, simple model of one-on-ones. Some of them were really quick. The person just might've had a quick question and rather than explain it over the phone, they wanted to come in and sit with you and be able to have you walk, you, walk them through it. Um, other one-on-ones probably did go for an hour, 45 minutes. Um, we purposely tried to keep one-on-one -on -one short because too much information for anybody, um, but especially in the tech world, is just overload. So we we really encourage people to come in with questions and then go home and practice, go home and try. Um, and as you're using your iPad or as you're trying these things, write down questions that you have and then come back and see us or don't be afraid to call us. Um, we're here, come back. You've, you've met us now a couple of times, you know us, um, come see us again. And that's really what happened. Um, some people were in and they had their questions and they left and then others i had one um really awesome woman who i think she came back for about six sessions it was kind of once every week and each week she came in with her set of questions and she, she was so super organized um kate knows this but she's probably one of my favorite patrons because we talk all the time about the struggles of passwords and um login ids and she actually had an address book that she kept with her and she alphabetized her passwords by their account name in her book. And I just wanted to like, like, just, I wanted to like get a celebration or something going for her because I've never seen this, you know, before, because so often we're, we're trying to help people with passwords and she was like on top of her game. So, um, the thing to know is that again, everyone's in a different place when they come in for their one-on-ones and just being able to help them has been a really good experience. And I also can say that so many of them until this class, until coming in for their one-on-ones, they didn't know that this was an option for them. They they talked to me about how they have, you know, they have their their son or their daughter at home, but they don't want to bother them with this stuff. So, you know, they didn't know where else to turn. And so they were so elated to know that their public library was a place that could provide this for them and that they felt comfortable enough to be able to come back and come back again and then tell other people about it. So that's really been the benefit of the one-on-ones aside from getting the help, but also kind of awakening them to other offerings that they didn't know the library provided. Man, this sounds lovely. And I, I, I just feel really proud to, to just have been associated with some libraries who are doing great things. Um, and to just like know you both. So like, that's really exciting too. But um, so this is, it sounds not only timely, but um, just like super beneficial. I think so often, and this, this could just sort of be my mentality because I do work in youth services and hear a lot about like the babies and like early literacy. And I think just as much effort needs to go into working with and providing for our senior population as well. So I think the first thing I wonder, libraries, we see it on the listservs, like on, on Contact and Goodnight Mood and things like that. People are sort of beginning to have conversations about what in-person programs may look like. The nice weather is sort of leaving us. We have some really lovely like fall sweater weather days where outdoor things can still happen. 
but I'm going to assume and correct me if I'm wrong, that you guys did this inside, either inside the senior center, inside the library. How did that work with sort of pandemic-y things still happening, but in person, and you're working with a, you know, with a, a population that's at risk, sort of similar to people working with younger populations or, you know, people who are immunocompromised. What was that like? I mean, I can say for me, this was, a, I was anxious. I will be honest. Like it was, it was a little bit nerve wracking for me. Um, it was inside, it was in the senior center. It was in a very high ceiling room. They had air purifiers. We opened the windows, everybody wore masks. Um, I habitually double mask, um, which actually caused a problem because it muffles your voice a lot, like double masking in particular. And I was unwilling to compromise on that. Um, so I was um, shouting a lot from behind my mask. Um, and and um, unfortunately the high ceilings also meant this, there was a lot of, if there was any crosstalk, which there was a lot of, um, the, the sound and a, lot of the, and a lot of the folks who, if you're using a hearing aid, that kind of ambient noise is very challenging. Um, so yeah, it was it was a lot, and I we have not at the time that we started this, we had been open for quite some time. We reopened slowly, but we reopened to the public uh, in I'm trying to think. We did curbside March, April, May into June, and June is about of 2020 is about when we started reopening to the public, and we opened in phases, um, but we hadn't resumed indoor programming at that point in in August. This was August of 2021, um, and. I mean, this was the most people I had been in a room with in a very long time. Um, we know in Stratford in particular, that group of people is like that age population is high, high rates of vaccination. We were all vaccinated, um, but I, oof, it was it was a lot. Um, I mean, that, especially because I mean, for, at least for both of us, like I hadn't planned it. I mean, I, I think in a way that was sort of better that it was like a last minute thing. Cause I don't know that I would have agreed to it ahead of time. I would have been like, oh no, that's way too many people. But instead I was like, I, okay, we'll just open a window and we'll just, you know. Um, and so it was, I mean, nerve wracking for sure, for sure. Um, and it was, um, but there was really good ventilation and I think that helped. I mean, that was sort of what I kept at least in my head, hanging my hat on. Um, yeah, um, and it was, we've only just started resuming in-person programming for adults here. And it, and it is with, you know, relatively limited groups of uh, relatively limited numbers. And in, I'm, I'm actually in our large programming room because this is a nicer backdrop than my very messy office. Um, so um, yeah, but it was, I, I felt like that was a lot. So I'm sorry, that's a very long answer, but that was easily for me, the hardest thing about all of this was walking into a room with 20 some odd people into it. <laughs> How about you, Chris? Did you have any thoughts or feelings? Or, yeah, I'll just or add on really quickly that um, the mask made communication really difficult. Uh, of course, super necessary. I totally agree with Kate that it was a bit of a, uh, a shock to be in a room full of so many people after having gone for so long without it. Um, but it was also very nice because it felt like the before times, which we all miss. Um, but the mask was really difficult because, again, the acoustics were really tough. And then you have your mask on. They have their masks on. Some of them have hearing difficulties. I had hearing difficulties. So it was just a lot of shouting without trying to sound mad at them um so it's like <laughs> yeah. pleasant shouting um but we made it work and again i think um that's where transitioning into the one-on-ones was useful because you're not shouting at the person that's sitting right next to you in a clo you know in that one-on-one -on -one setting so we made it work that's i think once you're in the the situation you just go forward and and it works I think you make a good point, right? So you guys were sort of, and was it just the two of you who went into the senior center to do these, these uh, classes? No, we ended up with, um, the first time it was, there was a, a third, one of our other colleagues was with us, and then um, we had a fourth person um, after that. So we, we tried to go in as a group of four. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and but I, but sort of just, you know, to the point of like, so you, you go in and you do these group, group classes where you kind of get some of the basics down and, and you almost sort of paint the outline of sort of how to do these things, but then you have the part two, um, you know, separate from the classes where then people can come in and, and, you know, can sort of go through the process of, I remember this and this and this from the class, I'd like to talk about the nuances. So I think the way you sort of structured and organized that in a very like last minute, we didn't have time to talk about this way, seems to have worked not only for the population, but also taking into consideration that, you know, like, I am, I am at work as this is not my home. I'm, I'm in the office as well. So, um, you know, we're returning to normal, but we still have to be very careful and responsible 
with the decisions that we make. So I think that sounds, that's an awesome layout and an awesome system to have just like come to you. You guys, I love Trevor. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. <laughs> um, I, I really do. Um, so did, so you, I know, and, and you did mention, and I, I almost wish I could paint the picture of the fact that like the library and the senior center, they, I mean, one, one small overpass and it's just like one building at that point. Like they're really close together. They share a parking lot. Um, what kind of relationship did you all have with the senior center before this thing that you did? Um, I think, you know, there have been programs that have happened between the two. I mean, we've, we've certainly shared, you know, we've, um, I know that the reference department has gone over there and done things with them. There's, I, we've, there's been a lot of mutual support, I think. Um, you know, there's certainly, um, one, of, one of my favorite things when I first started, um, I um, ended up at the CERC desk subbing in occasionally um, and um, for a bunch of mornings, just, it just happened to be like right after I started, we had, you know, there were some vacations or whatever and I was helping out at the CERC desk and I would started seeing this whole regular trend of people who would take a yoga class at the senior center and then come over and get their books or they would come and get their books and then go to the yoga class, depending on what time the yoga class was that day. And like just such a pleasant flow of people back and forth. Um, and they are just such a powerhouse if, of um, what they do for the town and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think there's been, there's been a, a fair amount of mutual support and working together, but I think this was probably the most I don't know the most, but it was certainly a more comprehensive set of, of classes, of programs together. Um, you know, I know we've gone over there and taught things over there before, but it, I think it has been more in the, in the for technology wise, it's been more in the form of a demo or something, or talking about our eBooks or something like that. But this was, um, you know, where they had like, we've gotten this new technology and then, you know, um, for us to then show them how to use it, I think was probably um, a little bit more intensive than we've, in terms of the actual mechanics of the class than we've done in the past. So, which is awesome, which is always great, right? I, I think sort of with, with this whole panoramic that we're in, um, I think <laughs> a lot of relationships between libraries and other institutions have been cultivated, but I think there's also some validity and a benefit to having relationships already, um, you know, sort of before a natural disaster like we, we've we lived through so that, you know, these org organizations and institutions so that they can, they can reach out and sort of touch base with each other. So now that you guys have done something a bit more comprehensive, you know, sort of you've done presentations and now you've done hands-on, you know, programming, like IMLS's definition of a program. Um, do you guys, do you have plans to do things with the senior center? going forward? Like, are you going to sort of like build on this or are you guys talking about anything? Because it sounds, sounds like a lovely partnership and the proximity, you know, eight steps, you know, next door and right there. there you are with a, with a captive audience. You'll, you'll appreciate actually, since, since you have worked here and for, for other people, we have a, um, a, I was looking around because it's usually in here, a large whiteboard on wheels that has a, pro, a short throw projector attached to it. And that's, that's how we do, um, you know, we hook the laptop up, or in this case, I was hooking an iPad up to it, um, and we actually just wheel it. It is enormous. I cannot emphasize how bulky this thing is to move. And we wheel it down the ramp and across the parking lot. And, you know, and not even across the parking lot, because we just stay on sidewalks, because it's right there. Um, and at the same time, it is this incredibly awkward piece of equipment to move around. And I'm like, it's so close. And yet, <laughs> this is such a journey um, with this giant rattling thing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think they're going to do, like I said, they're going to do another round next year of this, I think. That's their plan. And I think this, um, because um, of just the time, we're hoping that we can maybe use some of our volunteers to help them run the um, the donation day of when people can come and donate their, their equipment. Um, and then I think we're going to do another round of these classes. And I think... Um, next, what I, what I would, what I'm hoping for, depending on how we can work this, depending on what their schedule looks like is we work with the Baldwin Center staff that are, or the senior center staff, it's the Baldwin Center is the name, um, the senior center staff, um, can also do help. We can also do the signups, maybe do the signup piece as like a, almost a one-on-one, -on -one, like a, um, you know, almost like, I, I keep thinking, I have this mental image of the speed dating of like at tables of like people coming and you just, okay, we're going to set you up with your, with your Apple ID. Okay. Cause if you just do it in a one-on-one -on -one, setting up an Apple ID and getting the person sorted in that regard will only take, you know, 15 minutes maybe. 
and then show them the basics, send them home with it. And then the first class can be a little bit, you know, less hectic and a little bit more productive. And then the second class can be even more detailed if we need it to be. Um, and so I think, um, I'm hoping we can get something like that going for, for next year's, um, and I know, I mean, I reference has done a ton of work with them. So I think we would just, I mean, they, they do, and I can't speak to all that because that's, I mean, I, I've just been tangential to it. Um, but yeah, they, I think they'll, they'll continue with the, the programs they've been doing certainly. And I'm hoping, like I said, I hope next year's will be a little bit, um, I, maybe we can get even more people. I don't know. Um, you know, so yeah. That's so great. Well, and you'll have time, right? Because I mean, that you're a little sort of like tech fair, tech cutting zoo type thing like that like that sounds that sounds like a lovely way to go about it just kind of like slide people from space to space and I I'm gonna be that taboo person and say I'm an android girl 100% of the way and the very thought of an apple id gives me a small panic attack so <laughs> like I panic and I'm like and I like my social like I shouldn't have two numbers that I have to remember for the rest of my life like that's you're asking too much um so this is great but I so I mean I guess my last question do either of you have any like words of wisdom or, or sort of anything to share for other people who might watch and they want to do something similar or sort of reach out and and partner with their local senior center? Any like any thoughts, words of wisdom, fun facts to share? I'll just jump in really quickly from a broad technology perspective. I think um, just adaptability is really the number one skill to have. I mean, that's just in general, but also when you go into a tech situation, you never know what questions are gonna pop up or what someone's worries might be or someone's concerns. And I think just literally taking it on a case by case basis is the best way to go about it. You can have dreams of making the person like the best iPad user in the world, but if they only wanna know how to get Netflix on their iPad and you manage to get them Netflix on their iPad, that is the, that is the success right there. So I think just going into that with that mentality and also just all of our programs, especially now, because we've all become masters of adapting and evolving and things like that. I think just carrying on with that is the is the way to go. Yeah, I hard agree. And I think um, the, um, yeah, I was thinking about this a lot this morning, that the, the people's anxiety around technology is usually because it, it mediates how you are talking to your friends and family and things like that in a way that um, if you've been using it all along, you know, I, I was thinking this morning about how my, one of my closest friends from college and I are, we joke about this all the time that our relationship changed over time based on the technology we had available to us. Um, you know, that when we first were out in the world, we had phones and we had landlines and we would miss each other. And I talked to her husband all the time and I never talked to him anymore because I don't call his phone, um, you know, and because I would miss her and I would talk to him. And then the thing that changed for us was we got um, iMessage, which I know, I know you're an Android user, but now we weren't paying for our text messages. So suddenly we were much more in each other's day to day, you know, because it wasn't like, well, we talk once a month or we talk once every couple months and you get the broad overview. So suddenly it was like, look at this cute dog I saw or whatever, um, you know, that you were, you were sending, you were, your communication got much more daily and therefore we were more involved in the minutia of each other's lives. Um, but if you're coming into that cold, you know, you haven't moved a lot, like texting is weird. You know, it's not like email. It's not like, a, you know, you can sort of, you, if you're just coming in, in the middle of that, um, and it does change your, your relationship with how you talk to people and what types of things. Um, and one of the things I always tell people is, um, when I, when, whenever we do these one-on-ones, whenever we do these classes is like, everybody uses the, this, these communication mediums differently and there's no right or wrong way um, because I see that a lot with with folks coming in who say like well, my friend told me I'm using Facebook wrong or you know my my daughter says my I'm you know I, and then we've read all these articles about generational gaps in um, punctua and punctuation um, ellipses meaning different things to different people and things like that um, and I always, nope, 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 don't let that out of your mind. Let that go because that's just going to make you worry more about it. Um, so that's something where I, you know, I always encourage, um, folks who are doing this to just step back from that, um, and, and know that everybody's using this a little bit differently. And also that for the folks who are, who have trepidation about it, because it is a, it feels very different that you know you already have these skills you just need to apply them in a different way like you're not going to get scammed just because it's on the internet if you know how to handle 
a phone scam or a chain mail scam, you can handle this. Like you'll be okay. Um, and, and apply those, those, that skill, those skills that you already have in this new medium. Um, and that confidence, like trying to boost the confidence is the biggest piece with that, um, I think. And that's, that's where it does, you know, we, we just have to keep being flexible and handle each person as they, as they come to us, as they, as they, where they're at and as they are. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. This was so lovely. And you're our first duet Yay. duo. Um, we appreciate you telling us about this fantastic partnership and, um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to take a lot out of it. And once we get this up, don't be shocked if your email explodes. <laughs> Well, people are always welcome to call us or email us, or I guess text us, I'm sure. <laughs> you find Facebook, Whatever I message. Facebook. It works. Um, we are platform agnostic here. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank goodness, because I found it. Like, or Android, <laughs> no, I found it. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.